Deliverance Revival Tabernacle Church presents The Time Is Now with Pastor E.I. Osborne Jr. and Friends, reaching souls unlimited with the gospel of Jesus Christ, raising up Jesus believers throughout New England, the nation, Canada, and the world. And now our pastor, E.I. Osborne Jr. Well, praise the name of Jesus, for he's worthy to be praised. I'm Pastor Osborne. I'd like to welcome you to another edition of The Time Is Now radio and television program. It's my prayer and sincere hope that God will use this program and use us right now as an instrument to minister to your needs, and I'm certain that God is going to do just that. You know, we're going to talk a little bit more about love today. You know, I, I hope you're not a person that minds when we kind of carry over a word or, or, you know, teach on it a second time or whatever. Some people, they want a fresh word every week. Well, sometimes you need to hear some things a second time. But, you know, many times when, if, you, if you're watching the program, especially in this half an hour segment, whether it's radio, right now you're listening to my radio, or television, there definitely isn't enough time to really minister the whole word. You know, we, we leave out so many different things, you know. Uh, and so when we, when we get into it a second time or a second week, um, you know, it gives us the opportunity to share some of the things that we may have missed the first time we ministered, especially on the half an hour uh, format. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's, it's good. You're, you're going to get something out of it because, you know, as we talk about the love of God, man, I tell you what, it has, it has really changed my perspective on, on Scripture. There's things that I've read in the Word that I've read many times. But now, when I look at those same verses of Scripture with this understanding, okay, you know, as, as limited as it may be of God's love, it changes it. See, it's, it's changed it. It's changed it. Um, let me, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you one of them. I'll, I'll show you one of them right now, okay? Um, one of them is 3 John 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as I so prosperous. Now, I've read that many times. You've probably heard it many times. But for some reason, now that God is dealing with me about his love and how great his love and his love is his love and his love, all of a sudden I noticed the verse starts with beloved, beloved. I said, wow, God is talking to his beloved. And then when I think about, okay, he's addressing his beloved, the people he loves. Then I look at the rest. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as a it, you know what? When I think about, okay, he's addressing this to the people he loves, and I think about the magnitude of God's love, then all of a sudden, yeah, it makes sense. Of course, God wants me to prosper and be in health. So if I were a person that said, well, these, these health and wealth preachers or these preachers are taking that out of context, and that's not what it means, and uh, I'm one of those kind of guys. Well, when I start considering God's love, and then I look at who he wrote this to, his beloved, well, why wouldn't I realize, why wouldn't I think that God wants his beloved to prosper and be in health? Of course he does. And you know what? I'm his beloved. Maybe, maybe people who don't believe that or like that or whatever, maybe they don't realize that they're his beloved. Because I'll tell you what, I'm his beloved. And you know, if I'm his beloved, that's what I would expect. I would expect that he would want me to prosper and be in health. Everyone I beloved, okay, all the people in my life that I beloved, I say that, okay, you know what, I, I want them to prosper. My daughter, I want her to prosper and be in health. My wife, I want her to prosper and be in health. My brothers and sisters, well, you know, yeah. But the thing is, mo the people I beloved, I want them to prosper and be in health, period, okay? Listen, we thank God for you. We hope you're enjoying the program. If you are, to God be all the glory. God is such an awesome God. I'm going to tell you, it's, he is amazing. He really is. And I'm, you know one of the things I'm glad about? I'm glad that he is a healer. I'm glad that he's still healing people today. I'm glad he's still, and if not people, I'm glad he's still healing me today. All right? And I trust him for that, and I believe in that, and I'm expecting that every minute of every second of every day of every month of every year and all that. So thank God for that. But listen, let me get into this word. If you'd like to come and fellowship with us, we have a service, two services every Sunday morning. Our first service is in Plymouth at 190 Court Street at the Cold Spring Chapel. Sunday morning is at 830. Our second service is in Dorchester at 1130 at 133 Harrishoff Street. Uh, we have a Wednesday night Bible study in Boston at 7 p.m. Thursday night in Plymouth at 7 p.m. Friday night service in Boston at 7 p.m. at those locations. And I'll tell you what, we, we'd love to have you, okay? Um, more information, go to the website, eiosborne.org. You should find 
all, if not most, of the information that you need right there, or you can call the information prayer line at 508-746-4085. 508-746-4085 is the information prayer line number. And uh, you can also correspond with us by, to, by mail. At the time is now, Post Office Box 3642, Plymouth, Massachusetts, 02361. Okay, and we'd love to hear from you. You know, the other day, there was a gentleman that called. He's, we, 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 we're now on in Bridgewater. I don't know if that's on the website yet, but we're on in Bridgewater, Massachusetts. So the person that comes to the church in Plymouth, they sponsored the program in Bridgewater. They put us on. And uh, he called. He says, I've been watching you for a couple of months. And they, he said, I'm coming to church. And, and thank God he came. So maybe you're like that gentleman. You know, you've been listening for a little while. And uh, maybe you should come and visit, you know. And he, he came and, you know what, he, and he said, he, 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 and I'll tell you what I know is happening. People, are, the devil is trying to hinder and block and prevent it and stop you. He said Saturday night he was so sick, you know, and he got up Sunday morning. He was tired. He didn't think he would get up and all that. And he said, the Lord told him, go, you're going to, I have a word for you this morning. And he said, Pastor, he came after church and said, and he says, I'm glad I came. He said, the Lord told me to come. I'd have, he'd have a word. And he says, and I got the word that I needed. Isn't that something? See, but the devil, Hen tried to keep him from coming. He said all Saturday night he was so sick. That's nothing but the devil. And so if you've been like that, you've been wanting to come, attempting to come, and the enemy's been hindering you in some way, something always seems to happen, you need to persist. Be persistent. You know, fight that. Resist it and come. Don't, don't give up. Oh, well, I'll go next week. How many weeks has, weeks has it been that you've been saying you're going to go next week? Let's pray. Father, thank you for this opportunity to minister to your people. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would just use this program for your glory and to edify and encourage and help every person listening and watching right now. You are such an awesome God. You're a God of love. Man, your love is immeasurable. Your love is, is infinite. Your love is uh, unconditional. And we receive all of that love right now. And not only do we receive that love, we receive the manifestation of our healing a manifestation of provisions. We receive all of those things through your love. As a manifestation of your love, Father, as a manifestation of your love, touch and heal and deliver people right now. The person with diabetes, as a manifestation of your love, heal them right now. The person with arthritis, as a manifestation of your love, heal them right now. The person with a, with a condition in their blood, heal them right now as a manifestation of your love. And we receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we, we laid the foundation. If I had more time, I'd lay the foundation about John 3, 16, God so loved. You know, John 15, 13, greater love has no man than this. And we told you last week, the greater the love, the greater the gift. So God loved us so much, he gave us the greatest gift, the thing most precious to him in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He gave us the greatest gift ever. And, and one of the things the Lord dropped into my spirit was, you know, uh, uh, you know my God died for me. What is your God done for you? And so, you know, you, whatever your religious beliefs, whatever God you serve, maybe money is your God. You might think, well, money is my God. Look what my money, look what my God has done for me. Look at my mansion. Look at, look at, my, look at my car. Look at, you know, what are my clothes and all that. And, you know, or maybe you're some other, you're Buddhist or some other religion or whatever. And you're like, well, my God has given me peace. And he's given me love for mankind. My fellow man. And he's like, and my God says, well, as, as, all, as great as all that is, you know, uh, what my God has done for me trumps all of that. My God died for me, you know, and if money is your God, it may get you a lot of things. But one day <laughs> you're going to need a God that will die for you. OK, uh, because your money can only go so far. It might get you the best doctors, but even many people, billionaires, billionaires. I could mention one's name right now, but I won't. But billionaires have, with, with billions of dollars have died young. OK, I could tell you. A name, but I'll leave that alone. <clears throat> but the thing is, okay, see, but my God, see, listen, your God may have given you peace. He may have given, but my God, look at my mansion and all my wealth and success. My God died for me. See, even Oprah gives away cars, all right? You get a car, and you get a car, and you get a car. But tell you what, there's not one person in that audience that she gave a car that she would die for. You see, so anybody can give you a car and a mansion, all like that. And if, if you if you if you love this program, you love me, and you'd like to send us some cars and mansions and all like that, we would greatly we we'll receive it as a gift of your love. But the greatest gift is for God to say, I'm gonna die for you. My man, when I think of think about that now. Think about just if you meditate on that, man, you might explode. So don't meditate too hard, all right? But the thing is, think about that. Your God died for you. You know, a lot of religions, they don't even get into love. It's not even their relationship with God, their God, the foundation of their relationship with their God and whatever and all that. It has nothing to do with love. 
But for the Christian, for the believer, for the follower of Jesus Christ, our relationship with him right, is, 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 is founded in love. It's based in love. It's all about love. That's a powerful thing. Listen, your God died for you. You know, people talk about serving their God and all these other things. They go to war for their God. Listen, but your God died for you. Your God died for you. Died for you. He didn't ask you to die for him. He died for you. He died for you. Now, there is no greater love. See, the, the greater the love, the greater the... There is no greater love. The, 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 the greatest expression of love is not the car, the mansion, and all those things. And like I said, feel free to send them if you love this, love us, and love the program. But the greatest expression of love is to die for that person. To die. Because, the, listen, the greatest gift you have, you could be a billionaire. Your money is not your greatest gift. You know, you could be a car dealer and you've got Mercedes and Jaguars and whatever, you know, Rolls Royce. But th th that's not your greatest gift. What is your greatest gift? Your greatest gift is your life. So God gave us his greatest gift. Isn't that something? And so then when you think about that, then think about Rom Romans chapter 8. Okay, and verse 32, I believe it is. No, Romans chapter 8, and uh, yeah, verse 32. It says, he that spared not his own son. God gave the greatest gift, right? This is the life of his only begotten son, allowed him to die for us, even when we didn't deserve it, weren't worthy, and so on, while we were yet sinners, according to Romans chapter 5. It says, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, Listen, how shall he not with him also freely give us all of the things? I think one of the issues that people have with God being a, a God who gives and wants you to prosper and wants you to be healed and all like that is because they, don't, they, they really don't have an a, a, a understanding or, or I'll say a revelation of God's love. Because if you get a revelation of God's love, okay, there's no way you could say he doesn't want you to prosper. If you have a revelation of God's love, there's no way you could say he doesn't want you to be healed. If you have a revelation of God's love, there's no way you could say God doesn't want you to succeed and wants it for you now because he loves you too much. And listen, so it says, he that spared not his own son, if he gave you the most precious thing to him, the most valuable thing to him, right, but delivered him up for us all to die for us sinners, unworthy, right, sinners and so on, how shall he not with him also freely give us all of the things? And listen, you know, in Matthew chapter 7, and I believe in Luke chapter 11, you'll see this also, but in Matthew 7, listen to this, okay? It says, so Jesus is talking about asking and asking and receiving. So he says, asking shall be given, seeking you shall find, knocking it shall be opened. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. But listen to this. Jesus says, oh, what man is there of you? He's, so he's talking about us, men, okay? We've got children, wives, people we love, family members, and so on. What man is there of you whom if his son, you know you love your son, if asked for bread, will he give him a stone? So for all of you who think God doesn't give people this and God doesn't want people to prosper and God doesn't do this and God doesn't do that, he said, listen, here you are, okay, a man. If your son asks for bread, will you give him a stone? Why are you telling people, why would you tell people that if they ask God to help them and provide for them and prosper them and heal them, God isn't going to do that for them. You would do it for your son. If your son was hungry, would you give him some bread? Well, why would you tell people that are hungry that God doesn't want to supply their need and, and, and help them? Why would you tell people that are sick that God doesn't want to heal them? Listen, if your son is sick, do you want to heal your son? Do you do everything you can in your power to get your son healed? That's what he's saying. You know, he says, what man is there of you? who, If his son asks for bread, will he give him a stone? No, he's going to give him bread. Well, guess what? Our God who loves us so much is going to give you bread. Bread is provisions. Bread is a, is a symbol of provisions. You know, Jesus talked about in, in Matthew 15, he said, he said it's not meat to give the children bread to dogs, Matthew 15, 26. So bread is provisions. Meat means it's not, it's not right to give that which is provided to the, to the, to the dogs, for, provided for the children to the dogs, and just dealing with provisions. But so the thing is, well, what man is there of you whom if his son asks for bread, will he give him a stone, right? So why do we tell people God doesn't do that, our loving God? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? 
here you are giving your children, feeding them every day, clothing them, doing all those things. Why? Because you love them, but yet you say God won't, doesn't do that, won't do that for people. And then he says, if ye then being evil, God, imagine God calling us evil, and I think he's right in doing that, in doing so. He says, if you being evil, as evil as we are, as messed up as we are, right? If we being evil know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more? How much more shall your heavenly father, for you, uh, how much more shall your father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? How much more? But no, you know, no, God doesn't do that. God isn't doing that. Don't pray for God to do that. Don't pray for God to do that. Don't do, no. If your son asks for, asks for bread, will you, will you give him a stone? If your son asks for a fish, would you give him a serpent? He says, listen, if you being evil do good things for your children, why would you tell people and teach people that God doesn't want them to be healed and God doesn't want them well and God doesn't want them to prosper and so on? It's ridiculous. God is such a loving God. God loves us more than we could ever imagine, receive, and understand. All right? He says, if we being evil give good gifts and give good things to those that, to, you know, how much more? How much more? See, and, so, and God is a God of love. You know, people struggle with, I, I was, I was going to say something, it just got slipped my mind, but I'm going to go to John 10.10. 10. People struggle with uh, what is God and what isn't God? What has God done and what isn't God doing, right? Um, I know what I was going to say. You know, um, oh, it, it slipped my mind again, and nothing but the devil. But here's the thing, John 10.10, 10. John 10.10. 10. You know, people do things for their children, right? You know, if, you, if you're a wealthy person, if you're a wealthy person, I know a wealthy person, kind of know who, them a little bit. I don't know them, know them very well, but I know this wealthy person. Their child was getting ready to go to college, right? So they sent, they, they paid for the child's college. They put the child in an apartment uh, with some roommates. Uh, the child had a car and so on and all that. And the child had some type of expense, you know, whether a credit card, debit card, whatever. The child was able to do whatever it wanted to do. Now this is a person who's wealthy and they had the resources to be able to do that. So this wealthy person pays for the child's college because they want them to succeed and be educated and so on like that, put them in an apartment with some other roommates. They paid for the apartment. You know, they, they were, to me, they're sewing into those other people's lives or whatever. They said, no, nope, we have it like that. You guys can stay there. You're keeping our daughter. You're being her roommate and so on. With them. Isn't that great? So they did that. But their child had a car, had a debit card, de credit card, whatever it was, could buy. So, not only is this child in school and the tuition being paid and they have this car their parents are paying for with insurance their car parents are paying for and all that. This child, every now and then they hear about a sale, they need some shoes or some new boots or whatever. They're going out buying clothes, this and that. They're going to, they're going to events. This person, this singer comes to town. Oh, wow, that's my favorite singer. I'm going this Saturday. They buy the tickets. They go into the concerts and do all these things. Why? Because their parents are taking care of it. Their parents are taking care of it because they, they have it like that, okay? But somehow, we think God, <laughs> right, who is all-powerful, all-knowing, uh, and, and, and the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof. We want to say God doesn't want us to have anything. God doesn't want you to have anything. You're not supposed to have anything, you, you know, when all like that. And so Jesus says, if you being evil, okay, so God is trying to correct the, 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 the perception of who he is. He, it, because, you know, we, whether you realize it or not, you're accusing God of being like a deadbeat dad, <laughs> you know, really, because he says, God, Jesus, if you being evil do these things for your children, how much more? See, and that's about the love of God. That's about God's love. How much more? So, you know, if you're evil, here you are, the, the same guy who's telling people God doesn't do all these things for, for, for you, which, which are his, we're his children. He's got his child in school paying his child's tuition. He's got his child, you know, he has clothes in his closet. He's got maybe has his own car. He might have bought him a car after he taught him how to drive. He's got his child feeding him and doing all these things. And he's doing that for his child as a man, as a human being, Jesus calls evil. But yet he's telling you, your loving, loving heavenly father doesn't do any of that stuff for you. Jesus said, how much more? That's what Jesus said. If you are doing that, how much more? So John 10, 10, it says here, the thief, Jesus said, the thief cometh not before to steal and to kill and to destroy. He says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it, how? More abundantly. So now, when, if you're struggling, I, I went through a struggle the other day. I was waiting for something, praying for something, believing God or whatever, and the devil was trying to convince me, 
that somehow uh, uh, it was it was God. God was holding it back. God was waiting. So on, and you know, God dropped this spirit, this word into my spirit. I believe it's Psalms 84 and 11. It talks about God as a sun and a shield, and so on. And it says, "No good thing will He withhold will He withhold from those that walk uprightly." No good thing will he withhold from those. The Lord dropped that in my spirit, Psalms 84 and 11. No good thing will he withhold from those that walk uprightly. What was he trying to show me? He was trying to show me he was not the one hindering, delaying, opposing, and preventing me from having this thing that I'm waiting for. He was showing me it was the devil. In Thessalonians, Paul says, we would have come to you, but Satan hindered us. So who is the hinderer? The devil. God was showing me he wants me to have it. He's showing me through his love he wants me healed. He wants me to prosper. He wants me in health. He, he wishes above all things. Beloved. Talking to me. I don't know if he's talking to you, but he called it. I know I'm his beloved. He says, beloved, I want you to prosper and be in health. Well, your child is your beloved. Your wife is your beloved. So you're sacrificing and doing everything you can to get them nice things because they're your beloved. It only makes sense that God wants his beloved to prosper and be in health. So the, the, the devil's trying to convince me God is withholding it and God's teaching you a lesson and God, and God said, listen, no good thing will he withhold from those that walk uprightly. And I, so I said, all right, let me, let me start rebuking and binding hindrance, opposition, delay, and so on, anything that would oppose this thing. I'm binding and rebuking in the name of Jesus. Because, see, the thief, who's stealing your stuff? The devil. When you start telling people God took your house and God took your car and God made you broke and God is lost, wait a minute, that's stealing. God took your car, that's your car. He steal it. That's stealing. Well, you know, all belongs to God. Well, listen, he gave it to you. If he took it, right? He's an Indian giver, or he's stealing. But see, if you want to know, is that God, isn't that God? Well, put things in this category. Steal, kill, destroy. Anything in your life, Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, kill, destroy. He says, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So you got two categories. Put one category, put the devil, put Satan, the devil, all right? And put steal, kill, destroy. Devour, because he's also the devourer, 1 Peter 5 and 8. Anything that seems to come under that, in that type of group, put that in there, that's the devil. Anything that has to do with life and life more abundantly, that's God, okay? So if you want to know, is this God, is this the devil? That's your category. Steal, kill, destroy, it's the devil. If you're sick, it's the devil. If you got cancer, it's the devil. If you're struggling financially, it's the devil. If, if, you, if, you, if, you, if your house is being foreclosed, it's the devil. If your car is being represented, it's the devil. If you can't pay bill, it's the devil. All right. And, and, and you, I could say more about that. And, something you, and I know you might be thinking all kind of things, but the bottom line, he is the thief. He comes to steal, kill, destroy, devour. And, and if you're being blessed and you're prospering, you're successful.